Welcome back to another episode of the Wealth Secrets Podcast. I'll be serving as your host for the day. My name is The Mist and I am with Nana K here and I'll be serving as your co-host for today's discussion. We will be discussing understanding blockchain beyond the hype with not one, two, three, but four experts. So do stay tuned. Our first guest for today is in the person of Dr. IRJD. He started his career in applied information technology and has developed wide range of consulting services for, work, for workshops and on technology and keynotes. He's also worked as a consultant and trainer, speaks with clients and partners around the globe. He created the program Human Element in Agile and Cyber Security for Road Warriors. Our next guest is Jenny Zeng. She has over nine years experience in the global market, has worked for Fortune 500 company, and is the founder of Singapore blockchain-based media broadcast. She's also the second largest shareholder and board member of EA3W.com. Our third guest is in the person of Andy Lien. Andy is the book author for Blockchain Revolution 2030, member of Guillaume Sobok Do Blockchain Special Committee, Government of the Republic of Korea. He is also an advisory board member for one of the biggest automobile, in the automobile company known as Hyundai Dark Technology. He's also currently an advisor for CZ. And finally, we have David Gore as our special guest for today's discussion on understanding blockchain beyond the hype. Davi is 30 years in the banking industry. That is a lot of experience in the banking industry. He's banked with top firms, which includes Credit Suisse, First Boston, Citibank, ABN Amro Bank, and Development Bank of Singapore. Davi is also an economic advisor for Philippines Department of Trade and Industry, and has also been with the South Asia CEO for Chinese Financial Conglomerate. We are extremely excited to have all these top guests on today's discussion, understanding blockchain beyond the hype. And today, I want to say, if you've tuned into the World Secret Podcast, you're not going to waste your time at all because there's a lot you're going to learn together. Welcome, my special guest for today's discussion. Welcome, everyone. Glad to have you with us, guys. So before we get started, I would like to find out what is Wealth Secrets to you? Dr. JD, please let us know what you have. Well, I, I never express wealth secrets in wealth or in money. I express wealth in the form that we are living in the middle of a pandemic. My children are healthy. I am healthy. Most of my friends are still healthy. And we are finding new ways of entertainment, we are finding new ways of reaching out to each other. Today, I am talking to people from all over the world virtually. Um, I've met new friends virtually, which I have not yet f uh, met physically. And that is a whole new definition of wealth. So for me, wealth is much more what happens in my head and in my heart and the people around me than what I do or do not have on the bank account or in savings or in stocks or whatever. I, personally, my wealth is personal. Uh, for me, wealth is, um, you know, I've met very interesting people and I love some of the definition of wealth. Uh, I asked an entrepreneur before and say, what is, what is your definition of uh, your company profit? And the way he defined company wealth or profit is that how many employees standard of living he has raised within his company. So when he defined his company profit, it's not about how much profit he has made for himself, but how many people or how many people within his ecosystem as well as employees, the standard of living he has raised. That is amazing, right? And, and to me, that is the true definition of wealth is how we help other people to be a lot more successful. You can't spend all the money on yourself. It is not healthy. 
and you won't create the happiness that you have only when you share what you have with a lot more people and create a happiness that that is true wealth creation thank you mean wealth uh, is not what is it should be like how uh, for example like i see a lot of people like make a lot of money overnight and then they lose it all over like lose everything and then they get back uh, to the to reach like very soon because they know how so i think uh, the best way, uh, the best thing uh, young people should do is to like equip yourself with the knowledge and get into the the best or the fast developing uh, industry uh, those industry that are not uh, already stable yet uh, and find opportunity there and learn the how. And um, so like, even you lose it, uh, you can like get back on your feet all over again. I think wealth is about, is about empowering yourself. You know, you've got to take care of yourself to understand what is real wealth because uh, wealth in many ways is uh, to get yourself healthy, to get yourself, you know, the kind of knowledge that you need and talk to the nice people. I think those, those are the wealth, not necessary money, not necessary, uh, you know, go bar, not necessary how much you have in your bank, but it is how you treat yourself and how you get the wealth from everybody around you and work together. You know, that's the reason why we are here today, right? We're going to get this discussion started with the question, what is blockchain to you? I would love Andy to start this out for us. Andy? I guess that's a, that's a rather tough question though. But uh, to me, you know, <laughs> blockchain, I, I do see it as, um, as, a, as a technology, you know, as a, uh, uh, as a more sophisticated way to, you know, um, gather all your data, you know, put them into different boxes, different blocks and so forth. I think that's blockchain, of course. You know, in a, in a more in a more theory or in a more standard answer, you know, we, we look at blockchain um, in terms of uh, its capability. For example, tracking, tracing, so forth and so on. You know, I, I guess that 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 in the most simpler words is, is blockchain. But in my world, I think it's just a it's just an enhanced database, and an enhanced database that is able to solve some of the teething problems and enhance uh, things like security. You know, and then give everyone a level playing field in terms of, uh, you know, getting getting the cryptocurrency currency element into this whole whole blockchain space. Yeah. Cool. Well said. Thank you so much for that, Andy. Jenny, could you also give us a take on that, please? Uh, like, what is blockchain? You can definitely Google that or buy do that on the internet. So I will not repeat that part. I think well, uh. Blockchain is a wealth redistribution. Uh, I've seen like many like young people get into this industry and they uh, get to know this knowledge faster than any other people. So they um, get rich like really quick. So, and that is also, I bet that is also the reason why a lot of people been attracted to blockchain, to Bitcoin. Uh, so, I would say like this uh, industry is still in its very early and baby stage. So there are still like a lot of opportunities for, so I uh, strongly encourage like young people get into this industry because like bankers of uh, Devi or Dr. JD, like you guys are like, you already got the status in the society and you already have the wealth. So maybe it, uh, it doesn't mean like a lot to you guys, but for the young people, uh, I, I guess it might be the only chance they have to, to change or to level up their life. Okay, that's well said. Thank you so much for that. Um, Dr. JD, would you have anything to add, please? Well, I, I look at blockchain always from a very practical point of view, in the same way that I look at every technology, new or old technology. And blockchain has a lot of opportunities. And the, the most important thing I see in blockchain is that it puts the encryption of information in the information. All other technology is encryption on top of information. That is a wonderful aspect of blockchain. But I also look at the applications of blockchain. 
And there I have to be very honest, I'm shocked about the waste. I'm shocked about that we use 7.2 million CPUs per second for a currency. And that it is a cryptocurrency is fantastic. And that is away from all the conventional banking systems is fantastic. But that does not change that just Bitcoin uses already more electricity than countries like, for example, Argentina. And when we add all the, the cryptocurrencies and blockchain platforms, the pilots, the test and the actual platforms together, we accumulate the energy consumption of Germany and France and not separate, no, combined. So two major European industrial countries, that is the energy consumption of all those blockchain and cryptocurrency platforms combined. And that's something that I cannot put together as a value in a world where we have one third of the population not having proper sanitation, not having proper uh, energy, not having proper food, not knowing how to pay the bills tomorrow, etc. That's my mental problem with blockchain. The technology itself, I love every second, second of it. Keep it coming, just keep going, but make it better, make it much, much better. Okay, um, well put, well put. That brings us to um, the next question. Um, I would like your opinion on what do you believe personally are the main benefits of using blockchain technology? Dr. JD. Oh, thank you. So I come from the banking and finance. There's a lot of pain points in the banking and finance today, but I can talk a lot about the application and, and practical elements of blockchain. But today, if you look at it, we have global economy now. All the countries are interconnected, right? And what, what happens when you have global economy and global interconnectivity? You need payment. You need payment to go from one country to another country in super fast time. And today, we have SWIFT system, which has been built for many, many decades already, right? And I think blockchain will be revolutionary in making payments cross-border, right? I think that is a major application of blockchain and the benefit of blockchain. The other thing is with globalization and global economy, you have trade finance. And trade finance involves a lot of papers flowing around the world, right? You have your shipping document, you have letter of credit, you know, you have bill payments. So I think with blockchain, it can bring a lot of value to global, global globalization of the economy. And it will speed up and make it much more efficient in terms of payment flow. Thank you. I, may I add some statistics to what Davy just uh, told us? And that's yeah, very, very important to understand. 100% of all financial transactions include at least four partners. So four institutions minimum using the same information. If we bring that in one layer of information, we have an improvement of 75%. That's fantastic. When we look at cross-border transactions, that amount of partners simply is multiplied by a factor five. So one cross-border payment includes at least 20 parties because tax officers, you have to inform so many people. If we bring that in one data set, we have an enormous improvement. And then the next thing is the bureau bureaucracy around it, all the paperwork as David, David mentioned so well, if we bring that in one single data source, think of all the, the paper and the time and everything that we save. So there are the wonderful parts. And one thing as a cybersecurity person, I cannot stress mm -hmm. enough, the proper blockchain platform does that with encryption as part of the information. Okay. And that is, is and, and Davy is from the financial market. We have a lot of guests from the financial market. In the financial market, the security of the information is a decision maker or breaker. Right, Davy? Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Exactly. Spot on. Uh, this, this, these inputs are just um, brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, Andy, could you also give a say on that? Um, 
in terms of um, uh, I think in terms of the application for blockchain, I think we have heard so so many of it. You know, whether you are in the capital market or whether we are talking about payment, you know, whether you know we are talking about what uh, Dr. JD has mentioned about uh, you know combining the data sets together, uh, so forth and so on. I I think I think all, all these things are are great. You know, but what do what do we really see? You know, what what do we really uh, see in re re reality? Are, are there really people using it in that in that form? Is is combining all the payment onto one 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 source is the, the best way to do it? I'm not sure because um, uh, that 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 could also bring a, a fair bit of uh, security issues. That will also bring a, a fair bit of a, a pipeline issue in terms of you know how big the whole pipe is you know for, for this blockchain but all these things are not 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 the most important i think the usage of it is the most important you know like like davy mentioned about payment i think those are things that are really straightforward you know we, we have to pay for things every day right so payment would be would be would be a very easy way to let us know what is um blockchain uh, the other thing that we, we often talk about nowadays is uh you know nfts you know nfts is also another simpler way to introduce you know uh, 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 traditional people what blockchain can really do i think going back to the point is we need to see more more utility we need to see more usage you know um, that portion got to be improved a lot you know again not only payment but i will hope to see real good implementation perhaps in this in the supply chain space in the med tech space you know, in the AI space and so forth, because nowadays, you know, people talk about blockchain still, of course, we're talking about beyond the hype, right? But right now it's still still kind of in a hype, hyping stage, but of course, in a, in a much improved manner as compared to 2017. So I hope to see more utility, more usage, you know. Thanks. Thank you so much, Andy, for that input. Before we move to our third question, I love how the discussion is going, how the answers are blending into the next. What are the key challenges in the way we adopt blockchain technology or how you, what are the difficulties you think we're going to face in its adoption? Um, Debbie, please, could you start that with us? Okay, it's very simple. If I look at it, look at the amount of money capital was raised for FinTech. Uh, and you talk about, we want to see more use cases, right? And in order to generate the use cases, we have to see the investment flow into that particular use case. If we look at FinTech for the last um, decade, billions of dollars has been deployed in innovation, in developing new product, in developing new business model. So similarly, what has to happen is that a lot of capital has to flow into the blockchain development side. Today, if we look at the comparison between how much investment has flown to blockchain development versus how much investment dollar has gone to fintech, you see that huge difference, right? So we have to build a gap, bringing more capital into the blockchain development world. There's not enough sufficient capital flowing there. So mm -hmm. I think that is one of the obstacle speed bump to blockchain use cases. Thank you. Thank you so and much. And if I can add more, oh. if I can add more, okay. and it's something that we want to collaborate as a fund manager, right, in Singapore, we are a friendly country to blockchain. And as a fund manager, we can set up fund structure to raise capital to invest in blockchain. And, and that's something I want to add, right? Singapore is very conducive and encourages people like myself as a private equity fund manager to raise capital to deploy in blockchain. I can talk a lot more later, but uh, I will pass the mic to somebody else. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, David. Um, Jenny, could you please share some further light on it as well? Um, like I just mentioned now, uh, like I just mentioned, uh, blockchain is in its very uh, early stage. So the infrastructure, the technology, like everything is not quite there yet. So we see a lot of like problems like happening in the tech, tech mm, technology side. We see like big exchanges got hacked all the time. And we see like a lot of scam project in the DeFi sector. And uh, just yesterday, there's a new mine, liquidity mine opened uh, on Heckle, Heckle chain. 
and uh, if you put in your put in your coins in that mine like uh, immediately you lose 99 percent of your coin your asset so which is really scary so there's not much uh, like infrastructure uh, like almost like everything is on Israel. Now things like getting a little bit better now, but still like infrastructures now, yeah, regulations now, not there yet. Like a, blo a blockchain project, project or a company is like normally a very global. They got people all over the world. Like if they scam people, uh, like uh, you don't even know like how to sue them. Like uh, the, the CEO could be in US and the CFO maybe in like Panama, like so is um, so we are still like trying to like get those things ready. It will take time. So for many people, it's a very good opportunity, and for many people, it looks very scammy. Okay. I think that is the biggest problem, and what what is holding us back. Well, well said, Yanni. Very well said. Thank you. But and David if I can add like on to, to what Jenny has mentioned, sorry. Okay, David, go ahead. David, go ahead. Yeah, if I can add on what Jenny has mentioned as well, a lot of blockchain entrepreneurs don't like regulation. But actually, mm -hmm. without regulation, it becomes impediment to blockchain. So if we can layer some level of regulation as what to avoid the kind of mishap that Jenny has articulated, then blockchain can blossom a lot more. So I think entrepreneurs should not be fearful of regulation. We should work together with regulators and make it happen. And I can assure you, things will happen a lot faster. We should not avoid regulation. We should embrace regulation accordingly. So like I say, Singapore is a great country that encourages blockchain. I encourage all of you come and visit Singapore one day. Thank you. I, I just want to add quickly on, on, on uh, David's point as well. You know, I, I've been known to be pro-government on, uh, on blockchain and crypto matters uh, um, rather early uh, in, in this uh, industry. But um, I, I, think, I think a few, a few corrections uh, or, or a few of my own thoughts here is that one, I think, I think one, I don't think we have a lack in, uh, in uh, a capital per se uh, in, the, in the blockchain space. We know many people around us, you know, especially around my, my site, you know, we have gained a lot of uh, trust. We have gained a lot of uh, capital input, you know, just in this industry. I think capital is, is something that is very, is, is very subjective. You know, if, you're, if, you, if all along you, you, are, you are swimming with all, the, all your friends with good capital, you know, you can go to blockchain, you can go to another industry, the money will still come together with you. Because, you know, many of us will go with the hype, you know, go with the whole flow, right? So I think money portion okay. is, not, is not, not a main problem. I think regulation could be a big issue, but again, you know, you know whether, whether you know we 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 know all these things. You know whether you're in the banking space or you're in the capital space or you're in the in, in any of this industry that is uh, up and rising. You know, there's always some kind of a gray area or some kind of um, a time 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 period. You know, where things are not so uh, are not so cast in stone. You know, that is also a period where innovation is, is going to strive a lot harder. But of course, you know, innovation comes with a price. You know, innovation mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we, 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 we do not follow any regulations or we want to go against the law. We have to be above board so that the whole blockchain industry can, can, can shine. We have to also try our best, you know, through uh, private equity or, or venture fund, you know, like, or, or through Davy, you know, to provide the right kind of funding to the right kind of project so that the project can grow. And coming back to the point, you know, the, the first question was, uh, you know, what, what what's stopping the growth? I think Jenny's, Jenny's remark is, 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 is the most candid. I think, I think the human being, you know, around this industry are the, are the main problem because many of us, if you are on Twitter, I think most of us are on, except for Davy, I guess. Everyone is shilling coins and doing that is totally wrong. You know, is totally wrong. It's not. It's not done in the fashionable way. It is illegal, so forth and so on. We, you know, we 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 have to remove the speculative mindset. We have to, you know, try to be more realistic. You know, when when we talk about, uh, you know, when we talk about blockchain, because blockchain and cryptocurrency are actually two very separate things. You know, value and 
price manipulation or, or price hype is also a very different thing. But what, what we are trying to do in the bigger picture is actually innovation. You know, innovation, blockchain, okay. cryptocurrency is something that we will see in the future. And, and I hope people should be a bit more sensible, you know, be, because it's not always about price. It's not always about 100x and, and so forth. It's about the innovation. It's about the technology. You know, Bitcoin can be 70,000 or 100,000 in, in the next week. But what's the, what's the true value of it, right? So I guess, I guess we have to make sure that, you know, we protect the value, we protect the innovation. And that's where money can come in nicely. You know, better projects can be, uh, can, can be implemented. And, 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 and again, you know, people, you know, we've got to change the mindset. So sessions like this are very important to educate, to tell people what's the truth and tell people what's going on. Thank you. Wonderful input there. Wonderful input there. Nana, do you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to add up um, with regards to the regulation. I think it will help keep the number of blockchain and crypto projects we have. Because the last mm -hmm. time I checked, we have about over 4,000 um, crypto projects even as of 2021. And I, I want to ask how will people take the blockchain and crypto industry serious if everyone can easily come in and bump in with their own token, right? Come in, bump in with their own token, do some pump and then dump it and then that's all. And I think that is going to undermine the credibility of the entire blockchain industry. So that's something that I wanted to add. Yeah, that's, that's a good input. Thank you so much. Um, I think we can close this question with uh, my final from Dr. JD, then we'll move on to the next question. Dr. JD, do you have anything else to add? Well, the, the only thing I want to add is that we have to keep in mind that blockchain is software and cryptocurrencies, which are mainly based on blockchain, are therefore software. And there can be issues with it. You can issue malicious component. We had that several times already where hackers were able to introduce malicious, uh, malicious updates into the distribution channel. Uh, what is men or women made can be men or women disturbed. So we should first of all stop those stories about it is unhackable or it is the, the greatest thing that ever happened. It is software. And the second thing, as Andy pointed out, it is about innovation. It's about changing things. So let's move away from the narrative that when, when Elon Musk farts in the microphone, Bitcoin goes up 20% and, and then Tesla, but that's all irrelevant. That is the usual wealth collection by those who already have it. And the genies of this world have no benefit from that whatsoever. And the, the genies of this world, but also myself, have benefits from innovation. What if we can make a well-protected, well-designed technology platform so accepted that my doctor has access to the um, scan they did 12 years ago in the hospital when he's now researching something that is happening with me. What if we can achieve that? And what if we can achieve that Jenny has access to the information a researcher had uh, posted around at the other side of the world, but the researcher still wants to know who is accessing my information because the researcher wants to have the, the sources and wants to have the quotes and wants to keep developing. What if we create that? Let's focus on that part and cryptocurrency, to be very honest, I couldn't care less about who makes what amount of money there. I'm just concerned about <sighs> the impact on our environment. <laughs> well said. I mean, the what ifs of blockchain and the possibilities that can be um, really well put. Okay, so we'll move on to our next question. Um, Jenny, I'd like you to take this. I'd like you to briefly take us through the different types of blockchain. You know, some of our listeners may not be really know too much about this. So we'd like you to take us through um, the permission let permissionless public systems, the private permission systems and the hybrid systems. Jenny, the floor is yours. 
uh, sorry, I'm not uh, really like familiar with the, the concept one and my English is not that good. Uh, but I will like introduce you guys with some, some of the new concepts, some of the things that is really high in the market now. For the recent two years, there are like three things happening in the blockchain world that catches the eyes of like everybody. The first is DeFi, which is decentralized finance, which is like really like suitable for Devi. The bankers will definitely like it. Like uh, uh, Dr. J, uh, JD also mentioned uh, in the very beginning uh, that uh, like one single document must go through or like must be approved by like multiple people. And during that time, like people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So we have this like theory in our blockchain world that is in mass, we trust. We don't trust human, we trust the mass, we trust the system. So blockchain, uh, especially in this finance sector, uh, create a lot of lot of value. That's why the uh, for the recent two years, all the 100x, 1000x tokens are uh, like, like they are all DeFi tokens. So DeFi is the number one big thing that happening in the recent two years in blockchain. The second one is NFT. Now everybody's talking about NFT. They're talking about it only because that one picture, one artwork uh, was sold like millions of dollars. But that is not the most important part, like the hype. Uh, NFT, like it solves the copyright issue. And, and now it's only been implemented in the artwork. But later on, it can also be implemented in the music industry, in the movie, like in everything related to the to the to the to the copyright and also it can also be adapted to the finance sector like a, a bl or a packing list could be a non-fungible token so later on a bl you don't need to get the actual bl and go to bank and and borrow money you got this nft and it's on blockchain people can see like what's happening like what's this nft about and so it make the circulation of the financial products financial tools like much easier. So there's so much more about NFT, but people only know about the hype, like one artwork in NFT, like being sold for millions of dollars, but that is not important. So later on, it could change the whole, like the, I will not say change the world, but it will change the way we live, the way we create. Like later on, those uh, mu uh, musicians, they could create their music, just like initially just on blockchain. Uh, in the form in the form of NFT, and uh, later on, uh, because media is the information, so later on the art industry could be completely different. Before we only have like sculpture, we have oil painting, we have those water painting, but later on we could have a artwork in your house that is moving, and it got background music. So it's a completely new ways of enjoying art. Uh, that is the second um, hot concept in blockchain recently. And the third one is DAO, uh, distributed automatic organizations, which is like most of the blockchain products we are projects we are running on DAO. Like we got our developers in China, we got our like salespeople, like business development in US, and we got our PR uh, agency like in, in India. So uh, and like everyone is independent, um, but we can get things done. And people, like one single person don't believe, don't belong to like a certain organization. Like me, I work in broadcast, but I'm also helping many of the projects. So uh, it will be a new way of living, uh, a new way of uh, working. And uh, now there are like many uh, DAO projects coming out, like MakerDAO, like people, developers, they meet on Ethereum and they work together. Those developers, they don't know each other before, but they can work perfectly together and create new things, which is great. And maybe the basic concept things, we can ask Andy because he wrote this like a really best selling book on blockchain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Andy, the floor is yours. Please give additional input. I, I think again, you know, is is um, 
is is um, not not the most important thing to to learn about blockchain. You know whether whether you know it's on a P, POW or whether it's on a POS kind mm -hmm. of a, a staking model, a consensus model, or whether it's on a private blockchain or it's on the enterprise blockchain. I, I guess all these terms are fairly meaningless. You know as as we move on uh, in in this space. I think what what we should understand is that all those things could be the past. You know, those are like the basic 101 kind of blockchain stuff. You know, if we start to talk about those, you know, it seems like we are fairly backwards. But, but what I would love to say is that we should look at the future. The future would be cross-chain, multiple chain. It could be anyhow mixed together chain. You know, I'm not sure what's going to happen. But, but the, the ability to do a cross-chain transaction through multiple protocol would be one of the key, you know. So coming to the point, you know, the, there's the one company that I give my advice to is called CZZ. Uh, the website is class, C-L-A-S-S-Z-Z.com. That is one of the few protocol that is fully decentralized, you know, working on a POW model. And it, it enable real time cross-chain transactions. And that would also enable multiple chain, multiple protocol, and multiple standards to work together onto one chain. You know, I think such innovations are things mm -hmm. that we should look at. You know, it's no longer about whether this is on a private blockchain or on a on a semi-private blockchain or on a on a, on a child chain and things like that. All these things are terms because to me, it's just one one chain, right? So. It doesn't make a difference, is it? JD is agreeing with me. So I think the future is to look at multi-chain, multi-purpose chain, and so forth and so on. I think JD oh, would have something to say, mate. Well said, well said. Uh, Indeed, Dr. I, JD? I fully, I fully agree with you and also with, with the priority of, of creating a platform which is integrating all the other platforms. Because mm -hmm. in the early days of, of blockchain, as blockchain was going to save everything, the first thing I identified is how are you going to solve the interfaces? And do you really believe that everything is going to be on your particular blockchain? I do not believe that because that has never happened before. And you will see a very strong demand also to integrate blockchain platforms into non-blockchain platforms. And we, we have even, we have not yet really started to cover those uh, demands and, and that is necessary to move forward. Now, with what you describe, we're making very good steps in that direction. And I really embrace and enjoy that we left the stage where it is my blockchain and it is finally becoming our blockchain. But there's another part which I really want to underline what, what Jenny said and with the example of NF, NFT. NFT is designed to solve copyright conflicts and to make copyrights fair. I made it, it's my copyright. And I decide what I do with that copyright, but first I want to register it. No, somebody else has a much more expensive lawyer and now suddenly I cannot use my own copyright. That is what we wanted to solve with NFT. We didn't want to create something where people pay 69 million for a token and don't understand what they bought because they did not buy the art they just bought the registration of that art and and as long as we have more noise and more podium for those things and the wonderful information shared by jenny and andy and davy today on this platform are muted or in the background because there is no big money involved then we're not growing. So let's make sure that we keep sharing these things which matter. And, and with that, um, closing my comment, Andy, I'm so happy that you shared that with us today because this is a very important step forward. Yeah. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I think uh, maybe you could, you could add something about some use cases. Um, you all have given such brilliant use cases and giving such insight on this. Uh, David, could you close this with us? Yeah, if I can add on what uh, Dr. JD, Jenny, and, and Andy has spoken, 
a little bit off the tandem here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, right now, there are a lot of wrong connotation is happening right now. As what Andy has alluded earlier, cryptos, there's a lot of hype and a lot of speculative. Everybody looking forward to make a lot of money, 20x, 40x out of cryptocurrency. That's one spectrum. The other spectrum that Jenny has alluded to is a lot of scam, a lot of failure, a lot of scam in the market space, right? So that proved the challenge of what Andy was talking about. We are looking forward to innovation. But the problem is these two, these two speed bumps are holding it back, right? So honestly, in fact, I think we should drop the whole name blockchain. We should now be a subset. When we talk about innovation, we can call ourselves fintech blockchain so that blockchain technology is incorporated to fintech that allows payment cashless right we should have as what well, andy said earlier ai blockchain we should have a health science blockchain a med tech blockchain because and then you rebrand ourselves then you can see the amount of innovation how useful blockchain can be used like so we don't call ourselves blockchain anymore we we attach ourselves to a different brand right so, and that will maybe change people's mindset. Blockchain is not about speculation, right? Blockchain is about creating innovation and value to the community. Why? FinTech has attracted a lot of investment dollar because they have delivered value to the community, right? So, but blockchain is very, a good tool to support FinTech. So next time when we go to the market, we shouldn't say about blockchain. Blockchain by itself is useless, but fintech blockchain, ah, I can recognize fintech blockchain. There's a value to blockchain. Mechtech blockchain, AI blockchain, health science blockchain, right? You know, so I think that get people to talk about, oh, then they realize it's not a hype. There's real practical application to it. So there's a lot of mindset with new technology, with, there's a bit of training and development and education as well. So I think it's a good way to talk about it. Then we don't, oh, you talk about FinTech blockchain. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're moving money using the ledger, right? So I, I think uh, uh, we have to potentially change the way we talk. It's not about, oh, I make 40 times from holding this NFT. I make so much money, you know, speculating on Bitcoin, right? A lot of conversation going on right now happening today around that space. I just want to share that note. Thank you. With um, Jenny's submission and Davi's submission, I'd like to find out from Davi and JD, um, with regards to blockchain and crypto, can blockchain achieve its true potential if cryptocurrency goes mainstream, or is it possible for the blockchain to thrive independently of cryptocurrency? Um, JD, if you can start for us. Well, I think the first thing we should do is completely separate blockchain from crypto. Even when most, but not all, so the most cryptocurrencies are blockchain based, it is not the only thing that's happening. And it's actually just a smaller set out of it. So if we look at blockchain itself and we start really solving the challenges, and we start really using them in an innovative way. There's a lot of pilots, a lot of testing, and we need to get out of that pilot phase and, and get into the real world. I am convinced that when we do a few important steps, number one is we drop this thought that everything has to be decentralized and, and everything has to be deregulated. That is a very unrealistic expectation, and that will only lead to government saying, uh, no, thank you. And by being much smarter about it, we can do what the Singapore government, for example, did very early in blockchain and crypto. They didn't say no, they said, okay, and here are the rules. Now, Singapore has the opportunity because that's the culture as a government what they have always tried to establish. Yes, but these are the rules. In bigger countries or more complicated economies with all kinds of different influence factors, it will be more complicated. So if 
one side, the blockchain and the crypto fence says no regulation, then the government will say no acceptance. And, and that is one thing that we should change. The other thing that we should change is the focus from the profit we make short term and much more the innovation that we create long term. And, and we had, I don't have to repeat all the wonderful things that everyone said today about all those wonderful use cases we can get. And when we start focusing on that, blockchain can be significantly more mainstream and significantly more accepted than any cryptocurrency will ever be. Because let us be very, very honest, we have all heard the term 1%, right? The 1% the where the majority of the wealth is, well, no surprise, that's also where the majority of the cryptocurrency is. So that's not where we should focus on. Innovation is in healthcare, innovation is in, in, in creating transparency. Look at supply chains, look at, I want to drink a cup of coffee today, but I want to make sure that no farmer working on my coffee beans had an unfair job or was paid wrongly or whatever. And with blockchain, we can create that without anyone manipulating that. Those are the things we should focus on. And then actually blockchain is already much closer to mainstream than cryptocurrency is. And I think uh, cryptocurrency will not be there for a long time. Okay, awesome. Davi, do you have anything to add on blockchain going I, mainstream? I totally agree with Dr. JD, right? I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have fintech blockchain, megtech blockchain, you have AI blockchain. So blockchain is going to run ahead independently of how cryptocurrency position itself in the marketplace. There's no question about it. I think uh, blockchain itself is going to run a lot faster, right? Ahead of uh, crypto. And the acceptance in the market space is going to happen a lot uh, faster as well, right? So there's no, I totally agree what uh, Dr. JD has spoken about. So, and I, I think it's going to move. Uh, now the key is, how do we support the ecosystem of investment dollar to, yeah. to develop? I think that is so important. And that is why there's a lot, already a lot of investment dollars, billions of dollars are going to FinTech, billions of dollars are going to Algo, billions of dollars to AI, MedTech, health sciences. I think if you attach blockchain to it, blockchain will receive some money. And over time, blockchain will stand on its own. Uh, and that's how I will position it so that things will happen. So if all of us start to lead the market or within the community, spread the word around, then right now we focus on all this and bring the investment dollar to do innovation and value item, it will take off, irregardless of how uh, cryptocurrency is performing. Thank you. Thank you, Davy. So Andy, you are intergovernmental blockchain advisor and to Davy as well. I'd like to find out from you too. Um, with Tesla recently, you know, Tesla um, adopted Bitcoin, um, Bank of New York Mellon, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, and host of other institutional players are accepting cryptocurrency. Is there a digital currency movement well on its way to going mainstream or there's a long way to go? Andy, if you can start for us. Sure. Um, I think in the in the in the in this recent uh, bull run, uh, we have seen uh, institutional players and corporations coming in to um, to purchase uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and so forth. You know, adding it to their balance sheet. I think I think this is a very um, uh, good um, movement. You know, in in general, because you see. Um, new money coming in. You have you seen new acceptance uh, coming in. Not just the small retail investors. That is also one of the main driving factor that is uh, pushing the market right now. Um, but again, there are two sides of things to this uh, good um, uh, this this good run. Yeah. So one one side of it is that you know all those uh, big big boys like Tesla, Elon Musk. They openly mentioned that they will buy uh, and buy more, you know, if possible, grayscale, micro strategy, and so forth. They will buy more. I think all those guys are all accounted for. You, you will see their, their, their books in the public. 
but I know of uh, quite a number of uh, sizable uh, family offices that are actually buying them. Um, I'm not sure what is their mandate and how long they're going to keep them, but I'm also worried that they might dump in, 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 in due course, right? So, so I think there are always good things and bad things to, to, to what you are seeing right now, but, but basing on the current market sentiment, um, I think the good things are a lot better than the, 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 the bad ones, because I think um, Master, Visa, PayPal, and so forth, which again, more on the, more on the FinTech side of things are uh, coming into the place, coming into the picture, that would actually give a lot more confidence in, in the cryptocurrency space. Um, and, and again, going back to the previous topic, um, I do not want to separate uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in that manner. But if you look at it from a longer term perspective, the, the price that we are seeing right now, the price hike that we are seeing right now is actually one of the key driving factor that is driving the whole market. People got to know about cryptocurrency and blockchain because of the price increase you, you see on, on Bitcoin. So there's a, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a cycle that, 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 is, that is going around the market right now. So um, I, I see a lot of good things happening. I see a lot of uh, 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 governments also coming in to look at bringing uh, crypto onto their balance sheet. I can't say who right now at this moment, but there are already folks that are planning to do that as part of their 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 wealth management or part of their 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 their, their strategy moving forward. Okay, so Davi, you're gonna come in, but I want Jenny to come in. I think she has something to add. Uh, it's about the previous question. Uh, yeah, like right. I totally agree with uh, what Dr. JD mentioned about like uh, the blockchain and cryptocurrency is like completely different two things. Of course, like uh, cryptocurrency is on blockchain, but like uh, maybe like in five years, we no longer will have this uh, uh, blockchain conference anymore. It's, it will be like into our life is infrastructure, just like the internet. Nobody will like even feel that we are using it, but we are using it uh, and uh, also, like Devi, uh, Devi mentioned that uh, there will be like um, a supply chain blockchain, like fintech blockchain, which is like uh, I totally uh, agree on that uh, because like later on it will just be fintech, but using blockchain because now people will not say that I'm using internet uh, finance. No, they will just say it's fintech. Uh, so uh, uh, blockchain will become like part of our infrastructure that like you cannot even feel it but it is there just like air we are breathing but we don't know it is there <laughs> just like the wi-fi signal is there but we don't know it's there uh, that is one thing and the other is about uh blockchain is just a tool uh, it's not uh, that big deal it's just a tool like if a rubbish add blockchain is still rubbish like a scam adding blockchain is still a scam a good uh, a good intention like uh, fintech uh, is a good thing adding blockchain it can still be good so uh, i see a lot of hype in the in the traditional uh, stock market i can see a a chinese listing uh, listed company they add the blockchain into their objectives so their uh, price skyrocketed but actually they're not using blockchain at all they're still like they're still a dying company. <laughs> just like uh, they're just uh, using this, this hype. So uh, I also want the general public to know like blockchain is just a tool. Uh, like it, uh, it's not like uh, it will change the world. It depends on the people who use that tool. Uh, rubbish in, rubbish out. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect, perfect. So David, you have worked with top banks and with recent happenings in these top institutions, is cryptocurrency movement well on its way to go in mainstream or there's a long way to go? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, and something that I wanna really share um, right now because uh, and you talk about innovation, right? And I spoke about 
in order to get innovation, we have to get an investment dollar, right? And I'm very happy to say that in Singapore, we have regulations set up for fund managers like myself to so set up a fund structure to receive either fiat or even crypto into the fund. So we are allowed to receive crypto into the fund and invest in blockchain platform, right? And that will allow the innovation that Andy talked about, right? So um, Singapore government is very proactive in promoting blockchain adoption. So this will be a great way uh, beside the Tesla of the world accepting 1.5 billion and the rest. I think we have to put money and create the innovation and support the innovation. So, and in Singapore, we have the regulation to allow people like myself to receive uh, crypto, which thereafter we can give a return to the investor either in fiat or in crypto as well. So I will encourage any one of you who support this idea to, to invest your crypto holding into innovation. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. I think um, I had a discussion with Blockcast on blockchain in general and for Africa in scope. And I, I, I think way back in March, I made a suggestion, especially if a country like Ghana can go in for blockchain technology, especially in this early stages, because I think if we developing countries are looking up to catch up with the developed countries, uh, blockchain is one of the technologies that we can adopt and take advantage of. Um, especially considering, um, like what you just explained for Singapore, where to the extent where um, services can be rendered and people can be um, rewarded in terms of tokens and fiat. Like there's that coexistence between tokens and fiat when it comes to um, paying people. I, I think if most countries can also take advantage of it. It will help fasten the mass adoption of blockchain and crypto in general. So just, just, um, just to find out um, from Andy and Dr. JD, with regards to global jurisdictions, which, which ones do you think are taking the lead in the adoption of blockchain technology? And what are your thoughts on countries rejecting Bitcoin and other crypto or blockchain projects? We've seen China um, launching their digital projects recently. What are your thoughts, um, Andy? Um, I, I think, um, again, again, I think, I think this topic um, is, is huge, you know, but, but in terms of adoption, um, yeah. Countries like uh, Singapore is is very very open, you know. You just got to follow the rules. Uh, UK as well, South Korea as well. You just follow the rules. There are very clear rules that are in place, so you, you can just follow. Um, China is very much against uh, cryptocurrency, banning cryptocurrency, but is very very into the blockchain technology, you yeah. know. But 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 all these countries are actually in in, in very different uh, state. You know, very different state of adoption. I give you an example. Yeah, so you know, you, you have mentioned about uh, you know developed country, developing country using blockchain. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? You know, but if you look at it from another angle, you know, for in order for Singapore to adopt a fully blockchain system, you got to get rid of a lot of legacy system, and that's never going to happen. You know, that is also that is also one reason why Singapore is very backwards in terms of fintech. You know, I'm sorry, uh, David, you could correct me if I'm wrong. It's very backwards. I, 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 I was like locked in Singapore for one year uh, right now. And then I look at the apps and things that they are trying to push out for, for payment related uh, apps. It's, all those things are things that I saw in China 10 years ago with WeChat, WeChat Pay and Alipay. You know, you know th those are the legacy issues. But if you look at the maybe developing countries, they, they have a chance to work in a lot faster because they do not really need to care about all those legacy issues that come with it. Same goes for cryptocurrency. You know, uh, is is China uh, is is China's uh, position for his uh, central bank digital currency going to change uh, how how things going to work? You know, if they decide to 
to adopt cryptocurrency, I think they will be the fastest because they already have the infrastructure. They are very much ahead of time. It's just a matter of whether they want to push it or not. Uh, on the other hand, US would be would be would be in a very would be in a very strange uh, place. You know, some some states they are okay with uh, uh, are more friendly with uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Some are really not. And 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 one one very funny joke that I would want to share, you know, with all of you is is how the U.S. citizens are looking at um, cryptocurrency. You know, they are very some of them maybe they are maybe they have maybe a few million dollars and so forth. They they want to start a company that is crypto related, but but they are they are not comfortable to put their names onto their 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 white paper. They are trying to uh, manipulate and operate the co company remotely. And, and all these actions, you know, trying to hide themselves under a Panama company, BVI company, so forth and so on, but managed to get maybe 30 million or 40 million or 50 million worth of investment during this time. Do you think they are safe? Actually, they are not safe, you know, because you see, JD is shaking his head very much. I think they are not safe because as long as there are trail that can track you back to where you are, you are a US citizen, you did a, a big fundraise that looks like an ICO, you could be like the next ripper, you know, you could be having a court case on the next 10 years, you know, uh, SEC after your back. So I think it's not safe at all. So, so coming back to the point of regulation, you know, there are people who are looking at fully decentralized and, and some people are looking at fully governed. I think there should be a very good sweet spot in the middle where things can balance out. You know, U.S. citizen, for example, will not be so paranoid. For I give you an example, real real situation. I can't mention names and so forth. There's there's a there's a there's a there's an incident where where I got to know. You know, someone posted posted uh, the, the 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 token name and then a rocket beside it, and the, and that U.S. citizen came 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 to saw that 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 post and then and then the, you know. That person was saying, "Oh, this this is trying to to uh, sig signal that the price is going up, you know." But this is nonsense because if that is a signal to go up, I think Elon Musk would be jailed long time ago, you know, based on all his Twitter posts. SEC would strip him off from everything. So, so I think we we should not go to that extreme end of of being very paranoid. We should look at it from a very practical and realistic angle. You know, how are you going to promote your coin? How are you going to promote your cryptocurrency in the best manner? Really in the best manner. Best manner means you look at how the traditional securities are, are doing it, understand it, come up with something very similar and, and, just, and just run with it. Because if you, if you can pass that security uh, act, you know, in whichever country that you are in, most likely you are fairly safe. So coming back to this point, again, regulations got to be in place. Government got to really step up to look at the regulations uh, and do not kill themselves because I've seen people coming out with regulations that's going to kill themselves. Um, <laughs> and, and again, you know, we, 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 we are, for myself and a few others, we are working with, the, with countries like uh, Moldova. You know, they, they are also looking at uh, uh, getting themselves a fair bit more crypto friendly, so forth and so on. I, I, you know, and they have a different regime, you know, uh, from, from what, what, what Singapore is trying to do. I think those are some of the things that we should uh, continue to look at and create a more crypto friendly and, 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 and self governing kind of environment. Sorry, I, I think I said too much, man. Uh, doc, 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 it's your turn, man. All right. You, you said wonderful, wonderful things, Andy, and, and you mentioned a lot of, of good input through which we can create a much more friendly, crypto-friendly environment. But I also want to be the devil's advocate on behalf of all those governments who say crypto, no thank you. And, and that is the only currency which is able to compete with the United States dollar when it comes to money laundering, cyber criminality, general criminality, is Bitcoin and it's actually already getting closer to the volumes in those criminal circuits uh, that are floating around the world in in US dollars so that's one side of cryptocurrency 
which we don't mention when we are excited about cryptocurrency, but they are a reality of cryptocurrency. That is also something where we have to look at, can we develop instruments which reduce this cybercrime element in cryptocurrency? Example given, ransomware, where we all read about and we speak about them. And, and, and every time when we make a backup, we say, thank you, we still have some data. That is financed through cryptocurrency. There is not a ransomware which says, well, send the money to my traceable bank account, right? <clears throat> and we need to start also solving these elements of cryptocurrency. But from that perspective, we also have to be very realistic and open towards the governments who say, uh, we don't want cryptocurrency because yeah, you have to solve these things anyway. You have to, solve, have to solve them with US dollars. You have to solve them with all kinds of other payments. So we need to stop seeing cryptocurrency as a separate thing. And we need to start accepting that it is now part of our payment environment. And then we need to start putting the proper regulation and the proper law enforcement in place and, and the proper uh, disconnect between fiat and, and crypto where it is required and the proper connect where we can actually benefit from it. But on top of that all, I still would like to underline that blockchain should not be synonymous to cryptocurrency because then we get these, these um, sentiments and we get the paranoid people and that paranoia goes from crypto to blockchain and that would be a very very bad uh, thing um, so i'm not disagreeing with you andy i i just also want to add let us not um, forget about the things which are actually going wrong with cryptocurrency and and let's also focus on the solutions for that because we need to solve it no matter how we we are going forward all right, all right, Jenny. I think you want to come in, right? You can, you can. Yes. Uh, just now, the uh, Andy mentioned about China. Since I'm Chinese, so I want to add a little bit about it. Like, there's a joke we we talk about like all the time in the Chinese uh, blockchain community. Uh, the joke is like two cow are chatting in a farm, and one cow is like so concerned and asking another cow like, oh, I heard the crazy cow disease is on now. Like, I'm so afraid. What if we get, we get that? And the other cow said, oh, what are you talking about? Aren't we, uh, aren't we chickens? So uh, this, this joke is actually about the DSAC, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese uh, token, the RMB, uh, the, what, what is that uh, called? The DSEP token, like uh, the government yeah, issue. Yeah, 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 that is not cryptocurrency. That is a replacement of our current RMB. That is completely different from the cryptocurrency. That is one thing. Uh, so the so many people say that China is adopting the the blockchain and cryptocurrency. China is like supporting the blockchain, like uh, the cryptocurrency is not. It, uh, the DSEP is not cryptocurrency. That is something I want to mention about. And I see, and many of my friends, they cannot go back to China anymore. Like once they set foot in China, they will be caught and sent to jail. Like, so uh, the regulation is very tight there, very tight. So China is not pro cryptocurrency. That is one thing. And the other thing just, uh, Dr. JD just talked about like, uh, it should not be like everything, it should not be like all decentralized. It's not necessary. If the current system is already good enough, why we have to change? Like, I don't understand it. Like now, like I, I hear a lot of like strange projects, like every day, like people are trying to add blockchain and decentralize this concept to everything, which is like completely nonsense. Like, what do you need blockchain in the very first place? If the current system is already good enough, like why you want to get around it and avoid the regulation? Like there's one project called the Filecoin. Uh, it's a distributed, sto uh, distributed storage, cloud storage, which I think is nonsense. Like why you need a distributed storage at the very first place? 
the Amazon cloud is good. The Ali cloud is good. The Baidu cloud is good. Why do I need that? And the cost is extremely expensive. The current system is already good enough. And why you want to get around the regulation and doing something like we completely don't need and super expensive. And uh, that is the other thing. Like, I think people are overusing the concept of blockchain. Many things don't need blockchain at all, just like many things don't need internet. Perfect. So in effect, we don't necessarily have to decentralize everything. And what you're saying is true. Like you, you, you log into your Twitter account and you see a lot of um, crypto projects and they are that decentralization based decentralization that I think if it keeps continuing that way, <laughs> the term decentralization is even going to lose its integrity right? because everything is like, so people even have the concept that blockchain is all about decentralization at all costs, which is very wrong. So I would like to, this is my final question for the day. Um, I'd like to find out your final thoughts on blockchain beyond the hype. But before then, is Bitcoin and other cryptos, in fact, blockchain, other, uh, in fact, blockchain technology, in terms of their energy demands, is it going to be the Achilles heel considering climate issues and environmental um, issues? Is it going to be the Achilles heel? And what are your final thoughts on blockchain beyond the hype? Um, let's start with Jenny, as the saying goes, ladies first. Uh, such as uh, the climate issue, the carbon submission, like I emission, I heard a lot of things about it, like a lot of people against it. Dr. ZD, uh, JD also mentioned about it, that there are like good things and bad things about one thing, like the technology is mutual. Like internet is good, it changed our life, but there is also dark web, like doing like human trafficking. So like internet can also be used to do bad things. And a blockchain is like uh, really changing the way of our finance, like uh, the way our of life, like it make a lot of things much easier and it's temper proof. So it creates trust, but it also does some like um, side effect. <laughs> so yeah. we have to make a balance, like uh, if uh, to see whether the good is greater than the bad. So make a balance is very important. We don't need to, decentralize everything. We don't need to blockchain everything. We just uh, like put it into the right place that really need it and really can improve like everyone's life. Oh, and Dr. Zaidi and uh, De Devi mentioned that the uh, innovation, uh, blockchain makes the innovation much easier. Uh, like imagine there's two college students want to do a financial project. Uh, they want to make a stable fiat money and they want to raise funds for their project. It's not going to happen in the real world. Never, never in a million years, but it happened in crypto. There's a stable coin named, uh, named FEI, F-E-I. It's just a project created by two college students, which like really smart, extremely smart. And they raised billions of dollars on the blockchain because people think, oh, like they like the idea, they think it's gonna change the world. And uh, it makes innovation really easy. And it's a platform like you don't even need to know that person. You just agree with the coding and you agree with the smart contract. Then we are all in one team. I really like that idea. You don't need to like do those like uh, social, like you, you, you guys go on dinner, like having meals together and have a couple of drinks. You don't need any of that. Just every, everybody agree on the coding and agree on the smart contract, then we are a team. Perfect, perfect. Um, before we go on, um, I'll be glad if you can add Africa to your submission. Um, I think we've talked a lot about the uh, Asian countries and US, and let's try to factor in Africa as well, um, how Africa can catch in with blockchain. So Oh, I think this is a really good one because developing countries, definitely, this is a very good opportunity for the developing countries. So, like uh, um, we China. We can continue with David. Oh, can, can I add a little bit more on this? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, because sure. I'm also from a developing country. Uh, Andy mentioned that uh, China is cashless. Like five, ten years ago, people, people, we never bring a credit card or cash or cash in our pocket for years because we have this uh, Alipay, WeChat Pay. Like everything is um, is e payment. Uh, but why it's not happening in the U.S. or in Europe or in um, uh, Singapore, those developed countries? Because they already got the system there. Their credit system is like so great, like everybody's using it. It's so hard to change their mind. But China, we skip that. We skip the paycheck. We skip the credit card. We just directly get into the e-payment. And so that makes China like... Uh, even faster than those developed countries. And the other thing is the the Gautier. How to say Gautier? The, the fast railway. The fast railway. Uh, like okay. many European countries and US don't have fast railway, not even one mile. But in mm. China, they have like uh, millions of kilometers of the fast highway. That is because our infrastructure is not there. It's easier to build from zero than to destroy something and and rebuild again so for africa it is the same thing like uh for africa there's a not a lot of like infrastructures so you don't need to dis uh, disrupt everything like you don't need to like um like um do um, away with yeah like yeah. yes yes like you don't need to like um, take money from other people's pocket who's already doing it. You are like starting from zero, like uh, what China has made like uh, in this 10 years. So I think uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain is definitely one of the, one of the things that you get, uh, that Africa can catch up easily. Awesome. Devi, mm -hmm. you can come in. Yeah, a, a couple of points. Um, I am concerned about the energy consumption, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the concern of uh, Dr. JD is the same as my concern as well. Today, I think there was a renowned university they studied that says that Bitcoin itself consume about 70 terawatt of per hour of energy, which is equivalent to a country about 45 million people at energy consumption. So. Uh, it is a it, it is a very real concern, right? I think we need to solve that problem uh, accordingly for it to move forward, because uh, climate change is real. Climate change is not fake. Our global Earth, our home is heating up, so we have to be really mindful how we leverage on the the platform, right? So that is one of my concern, right? Uh, but coming back, um, uh, Singapore, I'd like to mention that Singapore is a financial hub. Globally, in the old days, Singapore was the third largest ICO market. We raised so much money for ICO market. And today, I encourage everybody to evaluate Singapore as a potential financial hub for blockchain innovation accordingly. I'd love to work with all of you in this panel, as well as in this chat room, how we can leverage on Singapore regulation to create the value for the community with innovation, uh, with blockchain innovation. I think that is very important. And typically, like the Uber of the world, like the Grab of the world, like the Tesla of the world, you got to start from one point. It's very important to create a beachhead. And I, I encourage global entrepreneurs to use Singapore as a beachhead to launch blockchain innovation. The kind of power coming together even though it's limited, but if you aggregate the power together, we can create a, a great ecosystem in Singapore and launch it globally. So do consider Singapore, all of you. Uh, that's my message. Thank you. <laughs> wow. This is really going to go fast. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who will be interested in this project as well. Andy, you can come in. Uh, okay. So I think I agree with uh, David. Um, if you notice um, the top 10 or even top 20 projects on uh, the crypto uh, space, none of them are from Singapore. I hope to see uh, more real Singaporeans stepping up 
to uh, uh, in this uh, crypto verse. Um, I hope to see that happening. You know, because uh, I think we we are walking towards um, a, a, a more realistic environment as we, as we talk right now. We are not just about hype. But if anything, and every one of you think that we are still in the hype, don't worry. You know, the winter market is going to come soon. The bear market is going to come soon. When, when all the prices drop to almost zero, we will be very hardworking. Is that hype? There's no hype, right? But of course, I didn't want that to happen, you know, because we have, we have our crypto asset. But, but that, if that were to happen, we will definitely go beyond the hype a lot faster. Just like the COVID-19, it brings us superly fast, fast paced, superly hyped up, superly pumped up for a lot of uh, uh, industry that is more in, 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 the, in, the, in the digital space. Similarly, for cryptocurrency, you know, we went up for, for a lot. Uh, but when things go down, we will all be working very hard on the infrastructure, very hard on, on all the technology and implementation. I think that is a very practical thing. We are old enough to have been through a couple of cycle, and I think that is going to happen. As for the climate change, carbon emission, and so forth, um, to be honest, I, I I talk about climate change when 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 I was uh, fairly young. You know, I, I do believe there is, you know, there, there is a need to be, um, you know, sensible in terms of uh, you know how we dealt with the climate. But 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 pinpointing to Bitcoin as wasting energy, as consuming a lot of energy. Uh, I don't think this is a, a really valid point to, 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 to look at because by putting up the energy, you also verify the amount of work. You also created a certain value out from that, right? But if we really want to be very climate change, climate friendly, I think we should stop the Zoom call ASAP because if everybody's on a Zoom call, everyone is on a, on, on, on a, on a, on a server, everyone is using, eating and so forth. There are carbon footprint every day, every day, you know. So I think I think it's the bit and pieces of things that we need to do to help the environment, not just Bitcoin, because Bitcoin, Ethereum, so forth and so on, every one of them, you know, are all running on, on servers, running on electricity. And that's how we are all connected. We are not connected on internet. You know? We are connected with all this electricity flow everywhere around us. So my take is we, we just got to be mindful you know, we just got to see the, 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 the pro and cons of, of, of having the cryptocurrency around, not just about the climate change, because if we bring a lot of different things into, into this uh, pot, it's really different, difficult to cook a nice soup. You know, we just got to focus on, 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 the, on the real stuff, you know, focus, focus on, on, on being, 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 being the right person, do the right job and, and, and build the in industry together, you know. So, uh, Africa, I, I think there's a there's a big chance to uh, to grow. So happy happy to take part in any of the projects and uh, stay safe. Thanks. Awesome. So Andy is saying that whilst we focus on what blockchain is bringing up, when it comes to things with climate change, it's a broader view. So okay, we we, we, we are going to wait to see what JD has to say on this because I believe as much as we are interested in the innovation and the technology. We wouldn't like to bring in something that is even going to make um, it worse of, in terms of climate change and worsening environment condition. But Andy, you didn't add Africa in your submission. What, what are your thoughts on blockchain and Africa? How can we catch up? How can you catch up? I, I think, I think um, you know, Africa in terms of technology, uh, in, in terms of uh, technology embracement, is actually a lot higher than many many of the countries in Southeast Asia. So I, I think in order for blockchain to work, uh, I, I think you have to see what, what kind of resources you have. You know, um, I have a friend who wanted to go to Africa to develop a team of people to do uh, development work for, for the blockchain space, uh, to develop uh, uh, more projects, you know, from, from Africa because what, what the perception they get is that, you know, it's easier to teach someone that is, that, that may not have the, 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 you know, may not have uh, past uh, experience in coding, teach them what they need to do clear, you know, with a, with a clear, clear mind, you know, they could code a lot faster. They would, uh, you know, they, they, they would, um, 
you know, they would uh, do the job a lot faster than, 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 than some of the developers in South Korea or Japan or US because all of them, they have their own thinking, you know. So I, I think for South Korea, uh, for, for, for Africa, what we should really look at is to develop uh, a more sustainable uh, developer base. Um, um, I, I do agree with my friend that that, that could be one, one anger. The other anger is also to look at the payment. You know, China would be a very good uh, example for, 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 for you to follow. Um, and it's also not that difficult to, to have that kind of adoption because, um, you know, governments are, are, are very smart. Government people, they look at the benefit that will come out from cryptocurrency or, or blockchain. If you can provide a value proposition to them, just like what I did to some of the government, they will understand um, how this is. Another very, very quick example, you know, I, I was giving advice to, uh, to, to a casino. You know, casino guys are very much into blockchain, you know, they, they want to cryptocurrency for their casino, you know, because of course, they could always transfer money a lot faster, uh, etc. And, and, and we had a closed door session with the government and the casino. Uh, end up after the talk and so forth, they, they realized one, one, one big flaw. And, and there's a, also a switch in thinking. The government who was actually against uh, cryptocurrency now agree that cryptocurrency is good because they can track all the expenses, they can track all the taxation, they can tra track all the money laundering, so forth and so on. And then the, 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 the good friend of mine, which is the casino, took a step backwards because eh, it's not so easy to launder the money, you know, oops, sorry, wrong word, not so easy to transfer the money, you know. So, so you know, these are things that, that really happen in the, in the space. And if we have the proper knowledge, provide them with the proper framework. I think governments will be a lot happier to do that. Those people who are bad actors or who are trying to do bad things, they will have a second thought because if they use, use Bitcoin to transfer and if the government, for, for example, wants to track down who the heck withdraw the money, who, where the money go to is all traceable. So, you know, being a crook or being the robber, you got to be smart. Being the government, you got to be smarter, you know. So, so I think I think that that sets a certain tone, you know, how how I felt uh, uh, cryptocurrency can can help uh, Africa, can help the, the rest of the world. Just talk to the government more; they will support, and you will get the right support, my friend. Awesome, awesome. So, Dr. JD, if you can finish it up for us. Well, thank you. Let, let me start with Africa and what Africa could contribute. Uh, right. and could be, how could benefit to from blockchain. The one thing that we see is Africa is still providing a lot of goods and, and raw materials and, and all kinds of food across the world. And that's, a, that's an important uh, export component for many African countries. Now, if African countries and African companies would embed blockchain so i'm not talking about crypto just blockchain if they would start at the foundation of those supply chains a data structure in a block blockchain platform then all the other suppliers and all the customers will very quickly uh, embrace the blockchain data chain from those goods something as simple as flowers more than half of the flowers sold in Europe actually come from Africa, although we think that they are European flowers, right? A lot of food that we eat on a daily basis in Europe actually comes from Africa. Now, the European people are very interested in the environment and green labels. What if I can actually read the certification by the farmer in Africa that this is the thing that he or she made. Am I then more interested in that product? Becomes the product more transparent? Let's talk about that and, and let's do that in Africa and not in the multinational corporations around the world that just want to use the African farmer as a cheap supplier. That's one, I think, one big opportunity for, for Africa and for African companies and especially the smaller ones. And that's one thing that I applaud in what Jenny said, told us today a few times. When you see blockchain as, in, as innovation, it suddenly opens doors for a lot of people around the world. And it doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter how much money they do or do not have. It doesn't matter if they're famous or not. 
And that is one thing where especially Africa and African students and African companies and African communities can come together. Think about wonderful things like that you as a, as a village create a pool of information which is important for you and you want to make sure that nobody is falsifying that information. J just the spontaneous thoughts, all those things you can do because once again, as Jenny pointed out, when you don't have a lot of, of government organizations who manage all the data and, and they all have their own data, but you don't have that yet, like we have in Europe, you get crazy about all the bureaucracy here. So if you don't have that yet, you can now build it smart. And that saves time and money and, and efforts and frustration. Wonderful. Now moving that forward, Africa is also one of the countries where there is this very explosive mix of climate, right? We have Sahara, we have thunderstorms, we have the risk of, of rising sea level, it's other parts of, of Africa. If Africa manages together as a continent, and I think it's still the largest continent of the entire world, right? For mm. surface. If Africa yeah. managed together, when it comes to blockchain, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to data, when it comes to climate, to no longer be at the end of the supply chain and at the end of the decisions, but at the beginning, right? Then Africa can also start taking control of what happens and taking, taking control of all the Western um, oil companies who are active in Africa make their profits in Europe um, or in, in the United States and, let, and, and still have the Africans sort out their spills and still have the African countries and African, African governments try to sort out the disastrous impact on the climate. Africa can really now take control through the one thing which on this world, in this current age, is everything, information. Africa can now claim its information and decide what is happening with that. I think that's the, the most important opportunity. Moving forward to my, my main topic, and the only thing I disagree with my newfound friend Andy today, and I really applaud everything Andy shared with us today, but I do not agree that the energy consumption of Bitcoin in particular is not a problem. From my perspective, it is a very serious problem. And that is not Bitcoin itself. It is the value created by Bitcoin that made the problem. When we were below $100 Bitcoin value, everybody was talking about all the options that could change. And, and all the improvement suggestions were welcome. As soon as we reached $100 value and the value became more important than the technology, all conversations stopped and the only focus was on when will the next halving be? How can I rush as fast as possible to profit? Will it be 100,000 this year or next year? And we lost the focus on two technical, technical things in Bitcoin it must be improved, but are now too late. The energy consumption and the CPU requirement. The CPU requirements of Bitcoin is ridiculous. For that little value, let's be honest, because it's big, it's huge, but, but still it is little value compared to all the other value in the world. And Bitcoin uses more CPU capacity than Amazon Cloud. You cannot sustain that. That is ridiculous, right? And a result of that is the energy consumption. And you cannot sustain that in a world where we have one third of the world's population. And unfortunately, a big part of that is in Africa. Without proper electricity, without proper sanitation, and even without connectivity. So, consuming so much for the wealthy ones and depriving the ones who do not have is from my perspective, 
what sums up what is wrong with Bitcoin and what sums up also what is wrong with part of our society. And not everybody, but a part of it. Flipping that coin, and as Jenny said very, very correctly, there's always a good side and a bad side. The internet is a wonderful thing and it is a bad thing. So let's continue to improve the good thing and let's continue to reduce and control the bad parts. Right? That's the way uh, forward. So Bitcoin itself is not bad, but <clears throat> the two aspects of Bitcoin are criminal and not sustainable. That's my personal opinion. Thanks. Welcome, Dr. JD. That is amazing submission from our wonderful guest for today's discussion on blockchain beyond the hype. Uh, but before then, I, you know, recently Theta announced that they are going to establish their headquarters um, for Africa in Ghana. So I just want to try it to you all. Um, if you guys think there are some um, projects we can work around, especially in blockchain um, and in Africa, I think you can consider Ghana and we can start something. I mean, Dr. JD is here, Andy is here, Davi is here. He, he is more into, I mean, like I can say that the panelists on this discussion are exactly um, the expertise you need if you really want to put up a project and if you would like to consider Africa and Ghana in respective. 